Chief Financial Analyst Tallulah just said to me, do you know that small stocks, like small kittens, like this one here, have outperformed large caps by a factor of 520x over the last 100 years? Yeah, 520x. So Tallulah is quite a smart kitten, even though she's rather sleepy. You're very sleepy today, aren't you? And I thought, therefore, let's look at some really small companies that are actually really good businesses. And rather than just give you a list, I will actually walk you through the criteria and not just that, but I'll actually give you all of the data, all of the research. You can download it for free at felixfriends.org slash small. felixfriends.org slash small. So download it and visualize this, this stock here, this chart. Small caps. A $1 investment in 1927 would be worth 2.6 million right now in the smallest cap stocks and a $1 investment in the larger stocks would have given you $5,000. Still a nice return, but nowhere near small cap stocks. So there is something in this. Uh, there's also something in this here, which is how we make money. If you want to learn it, how we made 126% in 2022, 105% in 2023. That's return on capital employed. And how we do that in like two hours a week, maybe three hours a week. And how it is a very simple three-step automated system that I will teach you for free. All you got to do is grab yourself a free seat. Felix Transitalk slash webinar. I'll give you the whole system, the whole structure, the whole everything. All you got to do is show up on time. Felix Transitalk slash webinar. Now, stock numero uno is MIPS. And you're going to go with a lot of these what? Because you've probably never heard pretty much of any of these companies. And that's why I want to share them with you. So they've got great cash flow. They're not growing amazingly. Price has gone out not a lot, which is actually brilliant. It's very profitable, but it screams expensive. So why is it on the list? Well, let me show you. MIPS make Helmet-based safety systems, it offers sports helmets, bike, snow sports, equestrian, team sports, as well as climbing, snowmobiling, whitewater rafting, and so on. And you're thinking, you're seriously talking to me about a Swedish helmet manufacturer? Wait a second. These guys are not just any old helmet manufacturer. They are the world leader in helmets. And they're not just used by sports people, but also by uh, governments, you know law enforcement, military, and so on. And if you thought helmets were a crummy business, they have a 70% gross margin, which is better than most software businesses. So realistically, most SaaS businesses should commit harakiri right now because their businesses stink compared to these guys who make helmets. I'm sure it's a terribly offensive historic reference, but you know that's what we go for here, terribly offensive things. We'll try to offend pretty much every political and social group out there during this video. And... Generally, for me, 60% plus is a sweet spot for a gross profit margin. 70 is glorious. Revenue, 35 million. Yeah, these are tiny businesses. 6 million profit. That's a pretty good margin. They've slowed down a little bit. I can't really tell you why, to be honest with you. I don't really, I couldn't really get to the bottom of that. And that would be something interesting to obviously find out. But return on invested capital is still very good. Earnings are still growing at 23%. And they're pretty good numbers but a tiny business that makes helmets in Sweden. <laughs> Look at their financials. They have just a teeny tiny bit of free cash flow. It was the years before were a lot better. So there's something happening there that I have not been able to dig to the bottom of, but if you're interested in this, do dig and share with us in the comments. But it could be an opportunity. I always quite like when things turn a little sour and it could be an acquisition. It could be something that they did. It could have been a, a one-time thing. Maybe people bought more helmets during COVID, you know, to protect themselves from the lurgy. And, and you can see that, yeah, revenue and market expectations, honestly, for small cap stocks like this, you can pretty much ignore this because no, no analyst worth a sold cover stocks that small. They just don't. So you don't really have that data point, which is possibly also why there are opportunities in there. Now, what about this one? Kelly. And who the heck is Kelly? Well, cash flow is pretty decent. Growth, so-so. Stock's gone up a lot, which we actually don't like, but it's very profitable and it's not very expensive. So what the heck does Kelly do? Kelly is a chartered accounting business. I mean, really, it doesn't get any more dull than that, does it? Sorry if you're an accountant, but it's a pretty dull way to make your living, isn't it? I love my accountant. She's amazing, but 
I'd rather her than me. And they basically provide accounting and taxation and, and so on and outsource CFOs and everything else. And they do that with a pretty decent gross profit margin. But what I actually like is how they've been able to scale revenue and return on invested capital is pretty good. Long-term earnings growth is pretty good. And if you look at these two numbers together, I'd sort of say that gets you to a 13 to 18 percent increase in share price in theory. That's not financial advice. That's just my uh, rule of thumb. I'd look at ROIC and long-term earnings. And uh, 66 million revenue, 2.4 million net profit. Net profit not massively increasing. I think they are investing to grow. That's my feeling. But they do have free cash flow, 12 million a year. So they're obviously getting paid retainers, uh, monthly subscriptions, essentially, which is which is good and, and, and very solid. So that's good to see. What about this one here? Expel. Sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Cash flow is amazing, but growth health, very good. Price momentum, ah, but very, very profitable and pretty inexpensive compared to the profit health. So this so far looks like possibly the best numbers we got on our list here. What do they do? They install protective films and coatings. Ooh, you know stuff they put on windows? Uh, Pre-cut film products for merchandise, apparel, ceramic coatings, all that kind of stuff. And they do that everywhere. They do it for car dealerships, um, automobile, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sticky stuff, basically. They have uh, been around since 1997, headquartered in Texas. And gross profit margin is decent for decent, not glorious, but then you have to actually move the stuff around and you have to possibly send people to install it and so on. So it's a little bit labor intensive, but revenue has really exploded. Profit margin is very decent and return on invested capital at 28% is fantastic. Profit's been going up 30% a year. That's also fantastic. So if you took those two numbers and said, well, I think the stock might go up 28 to 30% a year, again, financial advice, it looks actually quite good, right? So pretty impressive stuff there and $31 million free cash flow, which has absolutely exploded. So they've obviously tweaked their business model in a way that gives them more free cash flow, which is very, very nice to see and growth pretty healthy year on year, right? Very, very healthy revenue growth, very healthy net profit growth. So it seems to be a good business, sticking stuff on things. What do you do? I stick stuff on things. We're going to skip through those because they're pretty irrelevant. Trading at 22 times PE, not terrible. Quite hard actually to find stocks that are trading below that right now, unless they're really crummy businesses. I mentioned this one the other day. Some of you couldn't find it. Literally just type into Google text stock and you will find it, the ticker there. Uh, Polish company, great cash flow, amazing growth. Stocks pretty cheap, very, very profitable. So it ticks all the boxes and they make a uh, Live chat. Literally, live chat is their product. You know, the little thing that pops up in the bottom of a, of, a, of a website and you chat with people. That's what they do. They've been around since uh, 2002. So just after the dot-com bubble, text.sa is the company if you want to find the ticker. Text S dot A dot. And yeah, very, very good numbers. Gross profit margins is like perfect SaaS business. Revenue growing very nicely. Half of their revenue is pure profit. I mean, there are... There are cocaine dealers in Colombia going, ke? Uh, how do they do that? Let's change business. And return on invested capital, 127%. It's just glorious. That's why I wanted to mention again. I think this is a, they're onto something, those polls. And free cash flow, $40 million, which is also pretty staggeringly amazing. So there is that one. We're going to skip through those sheets because they don't mean anything. What about this one? Games Workshop. You're like, gaming company? Maybe a gaming software company? Well, no, you're not quite. Cash flow, though. Glorious, growing insanely. Price momentum, yeah, it's getting up a little expensive, but it's so profitable that it hurts and relative value also looking pretty sweet. What do they do? You wouldn't believe it. They design, manufacture, and distribute miniature figures and games around the world. And they do core and licensing and they offer figures, figurines, under the Warhammer brand, Age of Sigma, Necromunda, and Warhammer. 40,000 names, as well as Horus Heresy, 
blood bowl. This is important. This is really important that you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Audio books and, and and a bunch of other stuff. And they're based in Nottingham. Glorious, delightful Nottingham, which is a bit like you know the Caribbean. <laughs> Ah, uh, good old Nottingham. 70% gross profit margin. Oh my God, you can make that kind of money selling plastic figurines that weird people collect? Apparently, 620 million revenue. 176 million of that is net income. I, I should go into the small figure. Can I make, can I sell figurines of Winston? Would you buy them if I mark them up 70%? <laughs> this is crazy, right? Return on invest capital, 49%. Staggering. Okay, profit's not growing that much, but revenue obviously taking off here massively. So yeah, massive, massive business selling something really, really weird. And... 245 million free cash flow. There's somebody in Nottingham buying all the Mac mansions he can get his hands on because this is a business and a half selling something really, really weird. What about this one? Qualys. I think we mentioned this one before. Free cash flow is glorious. It's growing like mad. Price, okay. But profit health is fantastic. It's not super expensive. So we like it. And what do they do? Cloud-based cybersecurity. That's as simple as I can put it. it Lots of words, obviously, they got here. But basically, it's cybersecurity and uh, pretty big companies use it. I think TiVo, for example, use it, use them. And yeah, it's profitable. 80% gross profit margin, which is about as sweet as it gets. 550 million revenue, a bit bigger. Not quite as good a business as selling strange figurines, you know. The Warhammer collection. I'm going to want to have to get one of those, aren't I? You know what to get me for my birthday. Net income, pretty impressive as a percentage here. Return on invested capital at 37% is cha-ching and profits growing at 10, 11% a year. That's pretty sweet. And free cash flow. Oh, yes. $236 million free cash flow on... 550 million revenue, so something like a 40% free cash flow margin, which is staggeringly marvelous. So if you're buying cybersecurity right now, you are getting ripped off everywhere. And management is beating market expectations every single freaking quarter again and again and again and again. So they're obviously doing a very, very good job there. Now, we even have some multiples for this. 32 times PE, which in the cybersecurity space is pretty cheap. A lot of the stuff trading much, much higher than that. And if you thought they were going to grow sort of in the teens going forward here, that would take you in nine years down to a 10x multiple, which is not, not to be sniffed at. What about this one? HIMS Network, HMS. What the heck does that stand for? Cash flow, good. Price momentum, gone up a little bit much, but growth is very good and it's profitable. Oh, yes. And it's not super expensive. So it ticks our boxes. And here is what they do. They basically connect machines to the internet and they connect, you know, robots and and those horrible things that pollute the landscape. Sorry, windmills that save us all from global warming. Thank you. Uh, and uh, basically lots of machines that need to be connected. Buildings that have, you know, intelligent stuff in it. It gets connected. That's what they do. It's a really weird little sector to be in again. And, and they basically connect machines to the world. That's what they do. And they do that pretty well. Um, Wi-Fi, industrial, Ethernet, VPNs, blah, blah, blah. They're based in Sweden. Once again, the Swedes today are, are making an impact. Gross profit margin of 65%. Good enough. Revenue, 300 million, growing very nicely. Net profits, looking pretty good. Return on invested capital, 31 glorious percentage points and growth at 15%. We love it. We absolutely love it. And free cash flow? Oh, yes. $48 million. So it's a well-run business. That's all you can really say on that. Almost as much free cash flow as net profit here. So doing a good job, very little debt. So overall, a nicely managed business. Now, no real numbers there on the revenue. They are, they are too small. So there we are. You've got seven stocks, maybe five of them. I really like the top two. 
maybe a little at edge cases, but interesting businesses and some real weirdly diversified niches like helmets. So if you enjoy this video, you know what to do. One, get your hands on the full research, felixfrenzalog slash small. Two, come and learn with us, learn how beginners can potentially make money by trading just a couple of hours a week and how we automate it and how simple it can be at felixfrenzalog slash webinar. And if you enjoyed this video, share it. Thanks for watching. Winston and Felix here. And Winston just said to me, Felix, it's almost April. What stocks are we buying in April? And I thought, Winston, that's a genius idea. 